Bargaining with a Worm, Part 2. And by the way, I might as well bring up that, um, well, we'll find out at the end who, who oh, here, here. Uh, Bargain with a Worm, Dark Mysteries, number 3, October, November, 1951. Writer and artist, unknown. Master Comics, Incorporated. And it's the saddest thing is to know that someone took the time to come up with a script. Someone took the time to, uh, you know, work on the art. And you could look at it and just say, you know, it could have been this guy, could have been that guy. It's just hard to say. And you can't just assume, say, oh, this looks like, you know, did co or it looks like uh, Jack Cole or something like that. Anyways, onwards with the story. There's only three pages left. I know I'm being silly, but it was horrible, and it did upset me. Forget it. I don't think you'll be bothered by dreams like that anymore, he says, holding your chin. Fortunately, the office at the Silver Slipper was deserted, and he was able to return the missing $30,000 with no one the wiser. Evidently, the worm is in Las Vegas. But Jim knows he must find a thing spawned by outer darkness that called itself the master, that he called the worm. First, I'll put out a few feelers. I wonder if that's a pun. See if any of the lads have heard of the worm. It must be known it controls a lot of dough. This is where it gets kind of funny why I wanted to read this out loud. There's Jim in a bar, and he's talking to a guy in a purple shirt with uh, an uh, apron on. Worm, ha ha ha, buddy, you're hitting the jug awful early this morning. Then he's leaning up against the bar with a drink. There's a guy with a like a checkered cap, maybe like a cabbie, saying, and they say we're off our rockers. This guy is looking for a worm that talks. Jim leaves, realizing that his search for the worm is not to be as simple as he expected. He stops at the nearest police station. The desk sergeant is uh, writing some notes, and he says, Are you trying to kid me, asking me about a talking worm? Well, we haven't had any worms here, but we do have a lot of rats behind our bars. Ho, ho. Jim lets him have his fun, but persists in his questioning. But how much more can you ask them? Have you seen a worm or not? Finally, the big death sergeant grows angry. A worm, you say. I haven't time for jokes, mister. Now get out and stay out until you come back on legitimate business. And uh, he's pointing his finger at the guy right now. So Jim's driving by in his car, pensive. Uh, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I did just dream this morning. And then Beth's dream was nothing but a bizarre coincidence. But then Jim remembered the $30,000 he had won. That, he knew, could not be a coincidence. All of a sudden, screech! Hard on the tires, but I've got to know in a hurry if the money is here. It happened. And there is a worm. And as Jim walks into the room where this dude is, Oh, it's you. Come on in, Jim. It's a bald fellow. Looks like me. Only I don't wear yellow turtlenecks. He's opening a little round uh, safe in the wall. Oh, it's you. Come on in, Jim. Is everything okay, boss? Do the books tally out? In a way, yes. I've suspected you have been knocking down for a long time, Jim. Now I know the cash is short. A flat 10000 short. This is kind of actually a neat angle as we're looking through a... Um, type of a skylight at these two guys. It can't be. I put the money back this morning. So you did, but you forgot the interest. And the interest comes to exactly $10,000. You'll pay it, or you're in trouble, kid. Jim knew that he was trapped, and he would have to call upon that obscene monster again. Don't forget, ten grand. Another finger-pointing bit. And Jim... His eyes wide leaves the uh, panel itself, almost bumping into my shoulder. Come to think of it, $30,000 exactly wasn't our bargain. Our bargain was all the money. 
I needed. Once outside, Jim mentally calls for the worm. And suddenly all the buildings are crooked and everything. I'm calling you, worm. I need you. Send for me. Send for me. Immediately, the unearthly humming of the worm dinned in his ears. Jim follows the sound. Mm. And there's Jim standing there, and all of a sudden his girlfriend's behind him. Jim, Jim, I had to follow you. Wait for me. Wait. I'm coming, worm. I hear your call. A bargain is a bargain, worm, he says, sweating. There was no amount to the money sent. I need money. Hundreds. Thousands. You neglected to call me master, earthly, and you planned to kill me. Remember, I now know your thoughts. And the worm is sitting by a water fountain. And actually, in this panel, it looks like a baby seal. And his girlfriend's like wearing some kind of weird pajama thing and says, Jim, who are you talking to? There's no one here. You can't end the bargain. I'll kill you first. Ah! No, I can't. I won't. Don't compel me any closer. Don't! Written in green. Some hours later, poor, heart-weary Beth was still telling her story over and over to the sympathetic but incredulous police. That's all I know. When Jim came by my place this morning, he was upset, troubled. I knew something was wrong. So I followed him. I saw him run through this deserted garden, shouting madly. And there's the bag by a bench. Then it ends. He suddenly stopped and started grappling with that dirty old sack. And then, then he started crawling into it. As he did so, he disappeared before my very eyes. Nothing was left but the sack. At which point the cop should have dragged her away. So ends our story, or does it? At this very moment, are you certain of the origin of that strange humming sound outside your window? You are? Are you certain? And of course, all the people who know me will uh, say that, yes, I do know the humming. It's coming from the black helicopters that are always passing by toward the National Guard station. Uh, but again, you'd have to know me about that. If you're looking at this on YouTube, just go further down or further up and you'll see various uh, videos I've made of the helicopters flying by overhead. Once again, I'm laying my soul bare for the worm, or as I call him, Donald Rumsfeld. Hope you enjoyed part one and part two of A Bargain with the Worm. And sadly, we don't know who wrote it and who did the illustrations for it. But I hope that uh, Beth, the fiancé, was uh, dragged away to some crazy bin by the cops. Over and out. Thanks for hearing the story. Half a century ago. How about that?